you know, we took Sunday off uh, yesterday. Good work preparing for a really, really good Arkansas team. Uh, well coached. Uh, you know, it's a nice blend of four or five really talented transfers, uh, three freshmen that are playing quite a bit, and obviously Seals is coming back. Uh, has always played good against us. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think they were banged up three or four games. Now they're back to full strength, which helps their team. The probably thing that impresses me the most is their balance, ball movement, spacing, a lot of skilled guys, and uh, Moody may be one of the top three or four freshmen in, in college basketball. So, uh, you know, a game that, that we're looking forward to, big game, we're half a game behind uh, Arkansas. So, you know, this time of the year, there's a lot of big games in the SEC. Parrish, start us off. Hey, Kermit, uh, how difficult is it uh, for guys to bring the type of intensity defensively that y'all have shown the last two games? Well, you know, Parrish, I, I hope that's who we are. And uh, you're not a, a team that is going out there and putting up huge numbers offensively. And that's kind of, you know, who we are right now. We're, we're working at it every day, trying to tinker with offense, trying to get cheap baskets in transition. So. We've got to hang our hat on that, and we've got to do it against a really good offensive team. And, you know, the first thing is that I think our guys are starting to believe in our defense and that sometimes we're going to have to win games maybe with low scores uh, right now. And uh, it's not us not trying to score. It's just kind of who we are at this point. Statistically, Arkansas has been shooting it better in conference play than uh, State and A&M that you guys saw last week. What do you have to do to uh, – to limit them uh, offensively, particularly in the one-three-one, when they're you know those corner shots can come over. Yeah, you know, uh, number one, you got to get back defensively. They've got a lot of multiple ball handlers, you know, that can advance the ball up the floor, and they're very skilled. They can go really small. Uh, I say small, not play too unconventional, maybe not too big conventional bigs, and so they get really skilled. They can stretch you out. So you got to get back. And our man-to-man -man defense needs to be good, and obviously, you know, our zones mixed in. You know, we have to, to be active and, and hopefully get hands on balls and have deflections. And obviously, like Arkansas does, we, we, we scout and try to, to do different things that we've seen maybe with some tendencies. But, but they're a hard team to guard in any defense just because of their skill level. Go to Neil. Hey, Kermit, you kind of just addressed this a little bit. I'm, I'm curious, obviously, Arkansas, when, when they play at their best, they're scoring a lot of points. They're 84 a game in the, in the league. When you guys are playing your best, it's kind of suffocating defensively. Is it? Do you try to sort of dictate tempo? Is it kind of a battle of wills a little bit when two styles are that different? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, you know, obviously that they can that they can score in bunches and especially at home. And I think you know when you do this, Neil. I mean, live ball turnovers are critical when you play Arkansas in any game, but especially those guys uh, off turnovers. They're they're, they're very fast and. You know, it just impacts the game and offense, excuse me, defense, you know, goes right to offense. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to get cheap baskets offensively, Neil, you know, and so we're, we're going to try to play fast and transition, but we've got to kind of play it at both ends of the clock. You know, we got to play early and then, then hopefully kind of play, you know, from 20 to, to 30. And, uh, you know, and I, I do. I, th I think tempo can, can be a big factor. Go to John. Hey, Kermit, how's it going? Um, good, John. I want to ask you about Jarkel. Uh, these last three games, it really seems like he's coming to his own, especially offensively. And you guys have obviously been been playing um, much better these last couple of games. I, I just got to ask, what's the correlation there between the two? How much is his emergence playing a role in this little run that you guys are having? Well, you know, we, we started bringing him off the bench. He had kind of asked for that, you know. And I don't know, being an Oxford native and coming back home and put a little pressure on himself and then – and then he, then he started getting more comfortable. I, I think it's just like you'll just see transfers and high school kids all across the country, you know, just as long as they keep working. He's such a great guy that's, re, you know, just receptive to coaching every day. We've talked about it a ton, about his work ethic and, you know, when he gets to the gym, when he leaves the gym. And so, you know, good things are going to happen to him. And, and, and like some guys, they have to kind of figure out their spots and, and where is their strength, you know, offensively. There's, there's a lot of things he's still trying to get better at, making others better off the dribble, playmaking. Uh, his own ball defense has gotten better. So, you know, he's just getting better as a player, and uh, we need to keep a, a lot of improvement. But him playing well obviously sure indicates us, you know, playing better and having chances to win these kind of games. Go to Bob. 
Hey, Kermit. Uh, Bob Pope on Inside Democrat Gazette. How are you doing today? Doing good, Bob. Um, hey, there's a lot of tra- – we're going to talk about transfers for both teams. And Arkansas has got a few more than you guys and my, most teams do. But uh, Romello White, um, Eric said, you know, they reach out to pretty much anybody who goes to the port. So they didn't get anywhere with White. So maybe you already had him sewed up by them. But what kind of season has he had for you and what kind of season is – as a joiner had, just what's been those guys' impact for you? Yeah, you know, and I think it's going to be, you know, Eric's had a lot of success, you know, at, at Reno and then, you know, now at Arkansas, and, and, and we've had our share. But I think you've got to blend good high school guys in with them. Uh, but, you know, Romello has uh, he's had some good moments. Uh, we're trying, he needs to, you know, we're hopefully get him to rebound better numbers, you know, and I think that, if he can start getting 10 or 12 rebounds, it helps us. We've got to do a good job, Bob, of trying to find Romella when he's open. Sometimes we're late getting it to him because he, he needs to score in these kind of games. He's been a great guy uh, to coach, uh, very receptive, uh, re- really good player. Uh, and then Jarkel Joyner, obviously, same thing. Just a great, great young guy to coach. And uh, both those guys will be huge for us down the stretch. And in Arkansas, I've actually had five – Three grad transfers, two red shirts. They've all started at times. You know, Tate and Smith kind of been constant when, when Smith's been healthy. But well, what's your take on on the impact with their transfers? And I guess Eric's ability to bring in guys and get them to, to blend. You know, yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, you know, and, and I think what happens too, uh, you know, is that sometimes at, at like Ole Miss and Arkansas, you can get transfers and and you can play maybe some games at home some by games that gets continuity going and I think that that sure helped Arkansas I'm really impressed with their uh, you know I love Tate I think Tate's one of the most competitive guys that I've watched on film uh, no is a really really good player you know when Smith was out obviously that hurt him and now he's back and yeah they're 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 all mature uh, what I like about the, all their transfers they share the ball they pass it they're unselfish and uh, Eric's done a really, really good job blending that group together. And, and how glad are you to why you apparently didn't give Arkansas a time of day the way Eric made it? So. That's good. You know, Tate didn't give us a time of day either, Bob, so we're even, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so you tried to recruit Tate? Yeah, we tried to, we tried to reach out to a lot of those guys. So, you know, I'm glad he didn't give them any attention. They got, they got good enough transfers anyway, Bob. <laughs> okay, th- thanks, Kermit. Thanks, Appreciate Bob. It. All right, man. We'll go to Nick. Remember, when you talk about teaching these guys how to win these low-scoring games, at first, this offseason, did you encounter any resistance trying to teach that? Is that kind of hard for some of these guys to accept and learn? You know, I, I, don't, I don't think accept. I think sometimes learn, you know, just obviously, you know, different things just with, with, with schemes, and I think it just takes a while to, to get guys used to playing together, you know. And, uh, but for the most part, they've been very receptive. And, uh, you know, I think our ball movement is starting to get a little bit better. We've tinkered with that, you know, a little bit. And so, uh, so you know, we're not there yet, but we, we've, we've got to play more inside out and we've got to get more guys touches around the goal to make us better down the stretch. You've talked a lot these last couple of years about wanting to improve as a rim protecting team. It seemed like that kind of took a step forward against a and What did you see there? Yeah, you know, Romello White was, was good around the rim. He had three and it seemed like more. Uh, and that's, that's so critical in today's game just because of, you know, just there's so much dribble penetration in college basketball. The floor is spread so much better uh, than it used to be. So guys are going to get by you at times, so rim protection is, is critical. And, uh, and so Romello gave that against uh, Texas A&M, and obviously you're going to need that verticality plays and, and rim protection for sure uh, tomorrow night. Go back to Bob. I gotta get nim- more nimble at unmuting. Um, hey, Kirby, you, you guys, Arkansas and Ole Miss both went two and zero last week. I think it's the first time both teams have went back to back SEC games. Just uh, how obviously somebody's got to lose tomorrow, but um, just how how hot do you think you guys are, and maybe Arkansas is, and how you know good a matchup this is right now? Yeah, you know, I thought you know Arkansas's comeback against Auburn was a really good win for them. I mean, you know, Auburn is a much different team with Cooper. And the way they played in the second half was critical. They played very good against Vanderbilt. Obviously, you know, Bob, we're, we're a team that, you know, we're up nine at Florida with six and a half to go get beat. 
Uh, you know, it's a one possession game against Georgia. We're up seven against Wichita State at home, get beats. We haven't closed out some close games. So it's critical for us, especially, you know, to start it off at our arch rival, Mississippi State, which is, you know, is a huge game for us in our state. Uh, so I think both teams are, are playing well. We can sure make a ton more improvement. Bob, I, I bet you Eric can say the same thing, but I'm impressed with Arkansas, and it's just the nature of our league. I mean, it's just like I said, you know, I think there's there's two teams that are that are playing well tomorrow night in a big game, and you know, so uh, critical game for us, and great opportunities for both teams. And, and did, did you try to recruit any other Arkansas transfers, or was, was Tate the only one? Uh, I can't remember. I know uh, my assistants may have. You know, sometimes when it, there's not a lot of interest, it doesn't get to me. But I'd sure seen Tate play, you know, and uh, knew just how good a player that, that he was. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of battles in recruiting over transfers in years to come in our leagues. I think that one-time transfer is going to – is for sure going to pass. And uh, But like I said, you know, in the SEC – you know, you're going to have to have really good freshmen. You've got to have good young players to blend in with those guys. But, but getting those timely transfers and come in and help immediately is sure going to help everybody, whether you're Kentucky, Arkansas, or Ole Miss. Thanks. We'll go to Ben. Thanks, Bob. Kermit, you talked about playing more inside out. Um, how much does Dream play into that? And how is he physically after all the stuff he dealt with and kind of where is he at? Yeah, I met with Dream yesterday after practice. He's doing much better. You know, and he, had a, he just had – I said, Dream – I said uh, the NCAA allowed everybody to redshirt in COVID for a reason, for guys that have had years like yours. You know, they've just kind of had some bad luck and have been in and out. And I said, so just, just play. Just play and enjoy your year. Take advantage of every single day. And that's all you can do, you know. And so I thought he, he was good yesterday. You know, we make it even play he and Romello both together at the same time. That was something we were going to look at kind of before, you know, Hadim's, uh, you know, kind of his illnesses. And so, uh, but he's been fine. He's a really good defensive player. He can stretch the floor. And, and like I've said, Ben, we, we, we just need him to play well down the stretch for our team to, to kind of, you know, reach as, as good as we can be.